Um, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, welcome. Gosh, it's hardly uh, believable that it's just four weeks since we had our last catch up. It's gone in the blink of an eye. Uh, normally, I would give a bit of an overview to start with, but um, as we're um, pressed for time with Ellen, I'm really keen to hear what she's got to say. Um, Ellen's going to uh, talk first, then Joe and I will pick up uh, with, the, with our briefing um, just after 10. Um, so Ellen, I talk about baptism by fire. Um, Ellen joined um, the City Council Economic Development Department as Head of Business Growth and Inclusion um, just a few weeks before the lockdown. So uh, she uh, has kind of come into quite a, an interesting uh, job to be dealing with. Uh, she hasn't had an op opportunity to get out and see many of the businesses, so I thought this was a great chance to introduce her to Chambers corporate and partner members. But I'm also very keen, I know there's a lot of work being going on at the Council now looking at recovery as we're getting through uh, the initial confusion and crisis. So I thought it was a real uh, good opportunity for Ellen to outline um, her, her role, what she's planning to do in terms of delivering the economic strategy but I think more importantly to all of us at the moment is um, plans for uh, recovery for the city's economy. Um, just a very brief uh, background to Ellen. Uh, she joined from Standard Life um, Investments or Standard Aberdeen Investments, apologies, um, where uh, she was um, headed up the global business management team. And part of that work also involved the merger of um, Standard Life and Aberdeen Asset Management. Um, but as I say, her main responsibility at the moment is delivering the economic strategy for Edinburgh and um, a response to the COVID-19 impact. Right, I will hand over hopefully, what, 15, 20 minutes and then um, fingers crossed we'll have some chance for Q&A afterwards. Thanks very much, Ellen. Thanks very much, Liz. Um, yes, as you say, definitely a bit of a baptism by fire. I started my role in the beginning of February. Um, and uh, worked through about February, went on holiday for a week and then came back to a lockdown Edinburgh. So um, my focus has definitely changed a bit. Um, I thought I would just give you a brief presentation on what I am uh, meant to be doing uh, and what I will be doing longer term. Um, and then also a little bit around, as Liz was saying, uh, what we've started to do in the City of Edinburgh Council around COVID-19 immediate response and um, we are also looking at the, the econom economy recovery as well. So I'm going to see if I am um, technologically uh, um, able to share my screen. I'm not, the, not the, the swiftest on these things, so bear with me. So can everybody see that? Yes, thanks. Uh, yeah. Bob. Um, so let me just see. So basically, as I said, I thought I would start with an overview of the role that I do, what our aims and goals are and how we plan to deliver um, and then move on to what we're doing in the light of current events. I do normally prefer to talk with people rather than at people, um, but given the format here now um, and uh, that I won't be able to see everyone, um, so do feel, feel free to try and interrupt me if there's anything that, that you're wondering straight away. Otherwise, more than happy to take uh, questions and answers at, uh, at the later stage. So as I said, I joined the City of Edinburgh about three months ago as Business Growth and Inclusion Senior Manager. Uh, my team is a revamp of the previous economic development team that Liz mentioned which was restructured last year to better reflect the work that we do, which is essentially delivering the Edinburgh economy strategy. So I don't know how much everyone know about the economy strategy. So I thought I would just start with quickly summarizing this for you. And if anyone wants to hear more, I'm more than happy to send a copy of the strategy um, and have a further conversation with you separately. Listen and her team have my details. So the Edinburgh economy strategy, uh, for some reason it's not, there is entitled uh, Enabling Good Growth. It's closely tied to the uh, um, City of Edinburgh Council business plan and its key themes that you can see here, which is delivering an economy for all, building for a future Edinburgh and delivering a sustainable future for our children and families and a healthier city for all ages, delivering a council that works for all. So only the first one of the theme these themes actually mentions the economy. 
but the economy strategy spans all of them and it delivers our vision for Edinburgh to continue to be the most productive major city in the UK and a welcoming international city which is home to a truly successful economy where all of our citizens can benefit from the prosperity that the city creates. Now, Edinburgh has long been known as a, I don't know what's happening here. Edinburgh has long been known as a strong, resilient city that's successful at creating jobs and attracting investments. So in normal circumstances, about 80% of the residents of working age are in employment compared to the just under seven, under and over 75% average for Scotland and the UK nationally. We're often reported as, if not at the very top, then we are uh, at least high on the list of UK cities to live and cities supporting economic growth and business expansion. We perform well in business parts of survival rates against other UK cities. We attracted four, 20 major foreign direct investment projects in 2018, which is more than any other Scottish city. However, as the city grows, we're also seeing a huge increase in unemployment rates and numbers of people claiming benefits. So we're also seeing a huge change in circumstances that we work now being a prime example. Um, and the upcoming UK exit from the European Union does change the terms in which we trade with the EU and the rest of the world. And technological advancements mean um, labor markets and societies as a whole will have to operate differently. Obviously the impacts of COVID-19 have turned things even more on its head and I will come back to that later. Now that's moved on a bit quickly. So the uh, the delivery of the strategy focuses on two main uh, priorities, inclusion and innovation. Put short, what we're saying is that we need to ensure that all of Edinburgh citizens can benefit from the city's growth, meaning that poverty and inequality need to be tackled. And we also need to use new approaches, which will fully take advantage and develop the knowledge base that we have in the city. It's not a light task to do, so in order to do so, we need to be working in close collaboration with our various partners and, st and stakeholders. Obviously, Edinburgh City Chamber of Commerce being a main partner um, in this work. So we have basically identified eight main steps for good growth, as you can see here, and each step clearly attributes to the overall council business plan. They're all interconnected. And, and they are dependent on each other. But there are a few key themes arising here. We've got citizens, businesses, and environmental social governance probably being the key ones. So my team are working alongside other teams in the council <clears throat> to drive all these forward. On the business side, we run Business Gateway. I'm not sure how many of you have had any interactions with them, but basically what we're trying to do is not only help individuals set up new businesses, but also support them as they grow. We work in partnership with other bodies, such as, again, the Edinburgh uh, Chamber of Commerce, to ensure that businesses are supported throughout the city, large or small, new or established businesses. We, we try and help them all, as you'll be aware as well. The skill sets that are required for anyone, so be embodying entrepreneurs in more traditional forms of employment, is just constantly changing. Edinburgh has, in general, a highly educated population, but a university or college degree is not for everyone. And even for those that have gone down that route, the way we work today is very different from earlier generations. Career changes later on in life is becoming increasing, increasingly common, myself being a, a prime example. Um, and we are working together with universities and colleges to support uh, different means of both formal, but also run with the, the city region deal, the integrated regional employability and skills program which is basically us focusing on developing career progression opportunities rather than just providing an access to work um, idea. So this would be basically encouraging people to, to maybe think about, is this what I want to be doing? Do I want to change jobs? Or do I want to actually change into a whole new career? So for example, last year, in the few years, sorry, last few years, we've seen a rise in the technology sector and about 13% of businesses in Edinburgh are found within the information and communication sector. So we're working quite closely with the universities on the data-driven innovation program and development of the new innovation corridor, which is meant to be entrenching our position as a market-leading center for data development. And we, we hope also by this have the, the highly skilled workforce that's required and locations for them to work from. We also work with various skill centers to make sure that we can kind of couple up 
this new uh, skilled workforce with the right employers as well. So that can in involve helping new startups finding employees, uh, conditions that work for them, also developing and building on ex existing recruitment centers. Through COVID-19, we've seen some unprecedented impacts on the economy. So this is uh, what we're doing right now. Um, and there have been some predictions indicating that the short-term impact of lockdown results in a 20 to 25% drop in output in Scotland and unemployment should be peaking at around about 10% for all of Scotland. In Edinburgh, this translates to about 20 to 30% drop in output, which we valued at about 1.3 to 1.9 billion pounds. Um, and uh, we're, set, we're looking at about 19 to 27,000 jobs at risk and peak unemployment rising from uh, pre-COVID level at 2.9% to about 7.6%, and that's just in three months. And this, so this actually far outstrips the 2008-2009 uh, crash, both in scale and pace. We've, obviously, we've never seen anything like this. I think the word unprecedented times is being repeated in pretty much every single conversation I've had over the last few weeks, uh, but it truly is completely unprecedented. Within the council, we are working on a recovery plan. <clears throat> it's still very much early stages, um, so I can't really share any slides with you on that. Um, but I thought I would just talk you through what we're, what we're looking at doing. So we have an initial structure that is around six work streams. Um, the first one being, sorry, I'm just reading them off here as well. First one being capital investment and infrastructure development. So this is uh, led by our commercial development and investment team. We'll be looking at what we are currently doing, what are the shovel ready projects that can be progressed as soon as we're out of this lockdown. We're looking at how we can progress other major development projects, such as the Edinburgh St. James uh, Tram project, Granton, BioQuarters. There's a, a lot of different projects that we're keen to, to get progressed on as quickly as possible. Um, that works out. We'll also be looking at the housing construction and development pipeline. A lot of that has obviously been halted. Um, and we know that many construction workers are keen to get back on site. Mm -hmm. um, one of the key areas that I will be leading on is the employability and skills development. So obviously, as mentioned, we will have a large number of um, newly unemployed people. So we're working with our partners to get them back into work as quickly as possible. We've got a couple of uh, key sectors, uh, such as tourism, hospitality, and care, and construction again, where there's, been, there's going to be huge gaps as well. So we'll be looking to work with those sectors on how we can, how we can get uh, their workforce back in as quickly as possible. We will also have to look at the combined impact of Brexit and COVID-19. Um, as we all know, there's been uh, requests to halt the Brexit negotiations, but centrally from the UK government, the message is very much that they're planning to go ahead um, and uh, there will be no extension of the, the current, uh, the current uh, situation after the end, the year of the end, the end year. So we need to make sure that we're prepared for that as well. We are working on a workshop called Business Resilience and Growth. So again, this is where the Business Gateway and Associated Supports will be uh, looking at adapting to new ways of working. We've all had to work from home over the last few weeks um, and the expectations are that this will continue for some time, even though people can start to return to work. That won't be at full scale for a long time yet. Tourism cultures and festivals is a huge area for Edinburgh. Um, we're all impacted by the fact that the festivals won't be going ahead in, in August. Some, uh, some of our uh, partners are, are very keen to make sure that we can try and, and drive something later on in the year. And we're trying to see what, what can be done on that and also looking at what the impact will be longer term on our festivals. Digital paths to recovery. So as I, discussed, as I said earlier, digital boost is a huge part of the Edinburgh economy. So we're trying to ensure that we've got the, uh, that, that we can go back to where we were on that and, and can continue to drive that forward. And then the last uh, work strand is around regulatory levers for recovery. So this will be very much driven by our regulatory team and the trading standards team, making sure that businesses know what the what their regulatory impact will be on returning to uh, to work 
and, con and continuing what they've been doing before and, and how they want to structure the businesses after. So as I, as I mentioned, this is only very much in the starting phases. I'm very keen to hear what people's thoughts are. Um, some of the work that we're doing is to uh, try and set up working groups with uh, some key players in, in the in sectors to discuss what the impact has been and, and how we can help those sectors go forward. We are keen for this to be um, a collaboration between the council and partners rather than the council telling telling businesses how to how to do. Um, we don't think that's the that's a, a sensible way forward. We need this to be a joint effort between us all. I would like to point out that we are very keen to continue driving some of the, the key principles that I mentioned earlier. So we are going to focus on things like inclusion, fair work, um, sustainability. Um, we, we're still very much uh, keen to drive our zero net carbon by 2030 target forward. We don't really. We we, we would like for these to be part of the the work rather than being a separate work. Um, poverty is obviously a, a huge area that we that we need to consider in in all the work that we're doing. So I do feel like I've been talking an awful lot um, at people just now. And happy to take questions that anyone have. Um, any comments? And uh, as I said earlier as well, if anyone would like to talk to me uh, separately afterwards, uh, Liz has my details and I'm more than happy to, to take questions, comments, uh, or have separate discussions. Thank, thanks very much, Ellen. Um, okay. A uh, lot to take in there and I wish we had more time because I think there's a lot to unpack and, and a lot to discuss. Uh, rather than me talking at the moment, does anybody have some questions for Ellen? I think you raise your hand and then um, Rebecca, who's in control, will let you in. No, I, I mean, I, if, I, if I just come in a little bit then, Ellen, I mean, I know that um, tourism is a, is a big uh, sector for the city uh, and I sit on the SIG, which is the Tourism Strategic Group, um, and we're developing a strategy particularly around tourism because it's not just the 36,000 direct jobs, it's the, the four times multiplier of that when you look at sort of the plumbers who keep the hotels going and the, the van drivers who deliver the meat to the restaurants and the hotels. So massive impact. And at a, a recent um, SIG meeting, I think with the festivals closing, uh, the impact between March and September um, on tourism for the city will cost about a billion pounds and potentially 18 and a half thousand jobs. So, um, you know, starting that back up and sort of accelerating recovery um, is absolutely critical. Now, I, I know Adam chairs that, Adam McVeigh, the leader, and um, he's also looking at the other sectors. What, what can we do? Because I think the problem for most businesses is I think there are discussions going on, but we're not getting visibility and we need to get that communication out across the business community because I think in, with the lack of information, uh, people are sitting worrying. So what can we do as a, a business organization and, and, and businesses ourselves to feed into that and contribute? So I think that's a, that's a very fair point and uh, one that uh, we've discussed separately as well is, uh, is the fact that we're, it's very easy for us to in the council to go ahead and start, uh, we're starting our recovery plan and we're, we're thinking and we're talking, but then the fact that we're not communicating that out widely means that people are, are sitting and wondering what's happening, are the council actually doing anything? So um, we've taken that on board, we've had conversations with, uh, with internally and uh, we're trying to make sure that we're a little bit more open and uh, uh, sort of We've always been transparent in what we do, but the fact that we need to actually emphasize that and communicate that wider, I think is, is something that we've been, uh, been made aware of and, and that we've been thinking about as well. Um, I would actually quite like to almost put that question back to you as well, uh, which is to, to all of you on the call and, and ask what, what can we do to communicate better with you? How, how would you feel that um, it would be easier Obviously, you know, in an in an ideal world, we would have a forum where we can where we can speak to everyone directly. But uh, that is very difficult. But what what is the what's the the best way? Is it going through an organisation such as um, as the chamber, or is it um, I don't know um, 
advertisements on our website, uh, social media, what's, what is the best way for us to get in touch and, and have a, an open com communication with the businesses, individual businesses? I think collectively as a city, we've, we've got um, a, a number of platforms and a number of stakeholders. So I think if we could pull, pull that together, so particularly through the Chamber uh, of Commerce, we've got over 20,000 social media followers. So, you know, that's, that's a great opportunity. E-tag, uh, you know, even the airport. I, th I think what we need to do is look at what that ecosystem is. Um, I also think that um, this group particularly are, are corporates and partners, not, not that sort of the wider uh, membership isn't important, but you know, particularly you know, the additional resource that corporates and partners have um, as, as a group and a collective, we can use you know, maybe these monthly meetings or we could have them uh, more frequently so that you can update and then we can actually push out to our networks as well, because I think we're all in this together and the more that we know as a group, we can then push out. So, you know, I, I think this is a particularly good group for you to either give a regular update. I, I know Andrew Care, Chief Exec, we're, we're pinning him down on a date so that he can give an update as well. Um, and we've got something planned with Benny Higgins, um, Adam McVeigh and Andrew Wilson um, to look at, um, you know, the, the, the longer term economic um, recovery. But how does everyone feel? You know, we, we're happy to push out any kind of insights and communications from the City Council. Are we happy to put that out through our own internal networks? We're, we're very keen, like I said, to, to keep in touch with, with um, all businesses and, and industries and trying to get an, in, an understanding. So um, to date, it has been very much of an impact assessment and trying to understand where businesses are. Um, but I think we do have a bit of a clear picture of it and, and what I am keen to, for us to do is to not kind of fall foul of almost the sort of death by data where you're just collating lots of information but you're not actually doing anything with it. So um, that's why, as I said, the, the, the working plan is still very in very early stages but we are keen to get, get going as quickly as possible and try and make sure that we're also communicating with other local authorities and with the Scottish Government. The last thing we want to do is have a completely separate work, uh, work stream coming out of Edinburgh, so, which is completely different from, from the rest of the country. However, we do need to make sure that, that we are doing what's, what works best for our city. So we have very different circumstances than Glasgow or, or Inverness or any of the other cities in, in Edinburgh, we, in, in Scotland. We're very unique. So we need to make sure that we address that as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely, Liz, more than happy to keep in touch through, through yourself. And, and uh, if you do manage to get hold of, uh, of Andrew to, to attend your meetings, that is very impressive because he's, he's not an easy man to get, <laughs> to get into his diary. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm also more than happy to, to come back. And as I said, uh, I've, had, I've seen a couple of messages here around uh, sharing the presentation and I'm more than happy to do so. Um, that is just the, the sort of the basic presentation and as soon as I have anything that's a little bit more structured around our recovery work, I'm happy to share that as well. And um, if we can also put in, I'll put in my contact details there as well so that if anyone do want to contact me separately, ask questions or if anyone has any ideas or suggestions, I'm all ears and definitely keen to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, that, that would be brilliant. And Ellen, if you could join us on a regular basis, I think that would be really helpful because I think that's that's the main thought on people's minds now is recovery. I think we've all kind of come to terms with the situation. We understand support packages. Obviously, there's bits of clarification needed, but I think we're kind of all relatively comfortable, well, if, if that's the right word, of, of where we are right now. What the hunger now is what does the future look like? What is Edinburgh going to look like? And how do we start planning for something that we can't see? So I think that clarity around the, you know, the steps or the milestones for recovery and what the action plan would be, I, I think that would be hugely helpful. Um, I'm aware it's about one minute to 10, so you've probably got to nip off and, and get to your next call. Thank you so much. I think it was really good to just have that overview of the, of the strategy. Um, but I, I think I really think the focus is recovery now and anything that we can do um, as a business group uh, to support that we, we would be delighted to do so. But thank you very much for joining us. 
Thank you very much. And uh, sorry, just to address, I see Louise's message here as well. Um, I will, as soon as I have a, a sort of go ahead that those, uh, those focus areas that I mentioned earlier, that they are definitely the ones that we're working, that we're working towards. And I will share them as well to make sure that, as you're saying, that you're able to kind of address your own recovery work in, in the lines of that as well. Thank you everyone very much. And I look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully, um, maybe even in person, um, whenever <laughs> we're let out of our houses. Um, but thank you very much for having me today. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye now. OK, well, I think that was kind of useful to to meet Ellen uh, new in position. And I think she's uh, she's somebody that we've needed for some time. I think uh, when the Economic Development Directorate got um, merged into place with three or four others, um, I'm, I'm not sure that it's had the, the right focus. So I think that that's a really positive step that we've now got a point of contact. Um, so I thought for the next half an hour, um, uh, Joanne, my head of policy and I, um, we're going to give you a bit of an update on um, things that we um, have been picking up through the Scottish Chambers Network um, and the British Chambers of Commerce Network. Um, so I'm just going to give a, a quick overview and then I'll hand over to Jo. Um, Jo's been attending kind of daily calls with British Chambers of Commerce. Um, and, um, you know, she, she's looking at the kind of what we kind of know, what we don't know and, and where are the gaps. Um, as I say, it seems hardly four weeks since uh, the last call and um, we were trying to get clarification of some of the support packages that have come out. And yet here we are. Um, this week was the opening of the HMRC job uh, retention scheme portal. Uh, Joe had had um, a briefing from the direct, uh, deputy director of HMRC last week, um, and I think you know the, the the view from them is that they put this on a very robust platform that they've stress tested it extensively, so they're very confident that it's going to hold up, and I believe it's doing fine so far. 140,000 claims were made in the first day. Um, the advice is it's a five step process. Get all your information ready before you log on because um, there's kind of no kind of holding and then going back in again. So I think there's tools to help you calculate what um, what you're claiming for. Um, you have to calculate that um, and upload it. Um, they say that the money will be paid out within six days. The reason for that is three days as they have to do their due diligence. And, and checking that you are legitimate businesses and you are claiming for legitimate people and that someone isn't coming in and claiming on your behalf. And then the, the, the other three days is actually the back system. They're using a three day back payment system. So um, all things um, working as planned, um, people should be getting their money out as quickly as possible. Um, and according to British Chambers of Commerce Business um, Impact Tracker, over 70%, 71% of businesses in the UK have actually um, furloughed staff. 30% um, have furloughed between 75 and 100% of their staff. Uh, and I think 28 have, um, have not furloughed. So uh, a lot more than government initially expected. I think the estimate was about 3 million. Uh, when when the scheme was launched and I think it's likely to be somewhere between 8 and 11 million people furloughed so uh, massive impact um, on Treasury funding that. It has been extended to the end of June uncertain as to whether that will be extended further uh, but I think the, the main issue for most businesses is cash flow. Um, six in ten businesses in the UK have less than three months reserves so unless money starts flowing quickly from um, the job retention scheme portal, um, I think there's a lot of businesses who are going to start failing. Uh, so we've been pushing hard uh, again with the CBILs, which is uh, the government's um, uh, impact loans to try and get cash flowing as quickly as possible. Um, feedback is it's not going as fast as we'd like. And I think the volume of um, applications is kind of swamping the banks at the moment. So we're, uh, we're pushing for that um, to start moving. And also because uh, it didn't cover some of the larger businesses, um, there's, that's now been expanded to the CL bills, uh, which is the, the coronavirus uh, large business um, 
uh, interruption uh, loan. So, you know, we're, we're pushing hard on that. Um, in Scotland, um, I noticed that we got Tim Allen um, on the call. Tim is president of Scottish Chambers of Commerce. Are you still with us, Tim? I am to... indeed, yes. Good morning. Morning. I just wanted to say welcome. And I know the Scottish Chambers of Commerce are do, doing an amazing job um, speaking directly into government. And we were delighted with Fiona Hislop's announcement yesterday. So Scotland has another 220 million of funding um, for business support. 120 million of that will go to um, the business rates scheme uh, so that businesses with more than one property are now able to claim 75% um, for each additional building. Um, and and I, I know that um, Tim and, the, and Liz at, at Scottish Chambers of Commerce have been working very, very hard. And I was just going to hand over to Joe, uh, Head of Policy. So alongside the work the Scottish Chambers are doing uh, you know, with, with Scottish Government, um, we've been feeding into the British Chambers of Commerce Network uh, and BCC are having kind of weekly catch up with um, the Chancellor, number 10, Bayes, uh, and Joe has been feeding into that. So Joe, do you want to kind of give us a bit of an update what's coming out of Bayes at the moment? Um, yep, so um, I've, I've actually I've pulled a, a few slides together. Those who attended the last... Um, the last session that we had um, will be familiar with my very dynamic um, slides <laughs> um, pulling together. Sorry, I'm just trying to share the screen. Um, yep. So it's, it's, it's just a couple of slides, I guess, just to give a, a little bit of an update as to as to what we've been doing since since we last caught up. Um, so basically, um, and Liz has covered off some of this already, we've been engaging with the City Council, we've been working very closely with colleagues in Scottish Chambers and British Chambers of Commerce, who themselves have been working very closely with the other five big business organisations. TUC, and we really focused on sort of three key areas. So campaigning for help and, and support on your behalf, listening to what the issues are um, and continue to be, and making sure those are fed back with specific examples so that governmental and other stakeholder organisations such as the British Business Bank, the Bank of England, um, Small Business Commissioner, HMRC, those, those guys understand exactly what the situation is at the front line and exactly what support is, is specifically needed. Raising practical questions and sharing member experiences has been absolutely critical in that. So thank you to those of you who have done that and shared those stories with us. And please, if I can make an ask on this call, I would encourage you to keep doing so, so that we can keep feeding those types of issues back. They've been exceptionally useful in many of the measures that have already been announced that British Chambers of Commerce and Scottish Chambers of Commerce have been very involved in securing for, or helping to secure for businesses have come directly from from that feedback and we've also been trying where we possibly can to share information and provide clarity very mindful a lot of information out there at the moment a lot of overload of information a lot of people basically presenting the same information in slightly different ways so we've really tried to kind of cut through that and be as, as clear as as possible and in, in the information that that we've had um, and that we've shared we shared with members so in terms of, of, of big things that have happened since last time round, and Liz has talked about the coronavirus job retention scheme, the furlough scheme, which has gone live. Um, initial um, feedback is, as Liz has said, that the process has been relatively straightforward to apply. Um, but the big challenge um, will be making sure that the six days to get cash out to businesses actually happens because we're very mindful that the next big pay point or pain point for a lot of our organisations will be salary um, pay rule at the end of the month. Um, and Liz referenced um, the, the Scottish Chambers Business Panel Surveys and the BCC Coronavirus Impact um, Tracker surveys that have been happening on a, on a weekly basis. The latest one of those that came out on the 17th of April um, showed that only six in, 10, that six in 10 businesses have less than three months cash reserve. So this idea of getting cash out quickly um, is absolutely critical and we're still very focused on it. Um, the Small Business Grant Scheme is now paying out, we believe, um, according to the City of Edinburgh Council's figures as of Monday, they've had up to 5,000 um, applications. Uh, they've assessed almost half of those so far and paid out around £20 million. 
they still ha they have a hundred officers processing those applications. Progress is being made, but um, possibly not fast enough. Um, and we know that there are businesses who may already not, um, uh, or, or who may already have suffered critical cash issues um, in the length of time that that, has, that scheme has taken since it was announced, um, sort of mid mid to late March, to actually actually get cash on the ground. So we're keeping up pressure on that as well through the city council. Um, the Liz mentioned the um, some of the funding that's come out of Scottish government again through th largely through the, the support of Scottish chambers, so the extension of the business grant scheme we've talked about, the support for the newly employed and viable micro businesses. Some further detail was just announced on that yesterday, so you may have seen that. So that fund essentially breaks into three separate parts. There's 34 million for newly self-employed organisations in the form of a hardship grant of 2,000 pounds. Um, there's 20 million being allocated to the creative tourism hospitality sectors through an enterprise fund that will be managed by Scottish Enterprise and Visit Scotland for companies in that sector that don't get business rates relief and we know that that's been a big gap for, for, for many organisations in Edinburgh so um, good to see some, some support there. Um, that's designed to give rapid access to £50,000 of grant funding or larger grants up to £25,000 funding where it can be demonstrated that that, that, that is, is needed. Um, and £45 million of that um, is part of this pivotal enterprise resilience fund that's been announced, which is for vulnerable SMEs who are vital to the local and national economic foundation of Scotland, whatever that um, may mean in terms of, of actual detail once it's announced. Um, so further details of that have not yet been announced in terms of exactly how those these specific funds will work and when those will be available for applications, but we are keeping an eye on those and we'll obviously communicate as much as as soon as we can some more detail there. Government also this week announced the future fund. Um, and I, uh, so and I know we've actually had a pre-submitted question on this, which 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 maybe we, we can come to. So that is, um, well, the headline figure was £500 million of funding, but essentially it's £250, pounds, £250 million pounds of government funding and £250 million pounds of matched funding from, in, from private investment, um, which is targeted at high growth organisations. Um, and um, that's being managed by the British Business Bank. It's launching in May. The opportunity there is between 125,000 and 500 and five million pounds from Scottish government for businesses um, who are um, unlisted, who are registered in the UK, and who have um, can raise at least 250,000 pounds in equity funding, for, or have raised 250,000 pounds in equity funding from investors in the last five years that will be open until September of this year. We have very few details on the on how that will actually work yet. Detail will, will be published in due in due course. Um, and as I say, I know that we had a, a question from Darshan um, on on whether that will be applied retrospectively. Um, we don't know is the answer. There is no reference to retrospective application what's been announced so far, but we will push that um, through British Chambers of Commerce and try to get some clarity on that and try and push for that um, where, where possible. Um, the coronavirus large business interruption loan scheme, Liz, Liz has already mentioned. Moving forward then, um, again, this has already been discussed, the next thing we need to do is make sure that those measures actually work. And Liz has gone through some stats already in terms of what the impact has already been and will continue to be. Um, we have seen um, on Siebel's, for example, um, according to UK finance data as of last week, 300,000 um, or is expressions of interest, um, 28,000 completed applications had been submitted, 6,000 applications had actually been paid out. We don't have this week's data yet on that, um, but obviously we've, there's, there's a little bit more work to, to do there um, to, to make sure that gets out, out quickly. Um, something Ellen mentioned the impact on, on employment. Um, I sit on the job strategy group in Edinburgh. The, uni the universal credit claimant count came out last night and it shows that for March there's been a five-fold increase in applicants for universal credit already so that's without April's data being in place so the impact in terms of jobs is starting to be to be 
to be felt very acutely in, in the city. So there's, there's a lot of jobs, to a lot of work to do there in terms of making sure that measures are getting out there much faster than they are. We're still looking at gaps in provision. We know there are still serious gaps in provision. For example, owner directors um, in the furloughing scheme and the inclusion of dividend payments, it's still a gap. Flexibility generally around the following scheme is still a gap and it will be interesting, I think, to see how the government's um, recovery plan, which was announced yesterday, um, or that they are working on the recovery plan was announced yesterday, will try and try and address some of that as we start to come out of lockdown. Um, the self-employed scheme, which was announced, um, has not yet opened for applications. We were told on the call that Liz mentioned I was on last week with HMRC, we were told that they hope that that portal will be actually open from the 20th of May, so slightly ahead of the end of May deadline that they'd set themselves. So again, we wait to see how that pans out and, and how that actually plays when, once, it's, once it's launched. Um, and, and really um, kept just concentrating on trying to get key messages out to members, trying to cut through some of the noise that's out there to really sort of make sure that the key information gets out there. Learning from other chambers globally through British Chambers of Commerce and the International Chambers of Commerce Network um, and as Liz has already talked about, focusing on, on the future um, and, and focusing on what, what the new normal will, will look like. So that's very whistle stop, but um, a lot of activity, but a lot of activity still, still to be done. And please keep communicating with us and keep sharing your messages with us um, so that we can, we can feed those back in, into to our key stakeholders and, and key government organisations. Thanks very much, Jo. Um, does anybody have any questions or, or anything they want to share um, after Jo's presentation? No, nope, all quiet. I think um, probably the, the thing that's on everyone's minds, and I think as Tim mentioned, is we, we need to see some of the detail for getting um, the lockdown, um, you know, the, the, the exit out of it. Um, we, we'll be pushing really hard on that as a chamber. I think we've kind of dealt well with um, understanding the, the support packages and we've responded very quickly to get that information out. We've now got our COVID hub on the website. So all links, rather than send out updates, we're, we're just sending links so that those links are current and up to date and accurate rather than you know, this kind of moving feast of information on, on almost a daily basis. So, but our focus now is how do we help businesses use this time wisely? Um, there'll be a lot of businesses who furloughed staff, um, training is allowed. So we're continuing to deliver um, our training courses online. Um, these are all free. Um, we're, we're having a look at how we um, potentially charge for this because um, as a chamber, we have lost a significant uh, amount of revenue about a third of our income has been lost due to business failure, uh, loss of um, events revenue and training revenue. So we're the same as everyone else, uh, managing our, our business very, very tightly. But we are committed to continuing to support our members and the business community and the economy of the city. So we will continue to uh, run all our current services uh, free of charge. Um, our events, we're running two to three events a week, and I think people are really um, appreciative of this. Um, I think it's really important that businesses continue to maintain their visibility, they continue to um, develop their networks, and that they, you know, their profiles are, are out there, so that when we come out of this, um, we're in a much better position. I know sort of a lot of advertising gurus are saying those people who keep visibility and continue to advertise and maintain their profile will come out the stronger um, and, and the bigger brands um, once we we, we um, start. I, I hesitate to use the term normality because none of us really know what the new normal is going to look like. But you know that that's our focus for the time being. Plus, um, we are trying to develop some uh, seminars and some forums around recovery. We know a lot of businesses in the city, particularly the larger ones, are already engaging in recovery planning. So the airport 
for example, they're, they're looking at what they will uh, need to become. Um, as, as the city um, has fewer visitors, um, they don't see themselves as a 15 million passenger airport for some time. So, um, you know, we want to work with them to understand what insights they have uh, and what plans uh, and modelling that they're using to help reshape what their business looks like. And I think we can all um, share what what each other are doing to help um, the rest of the business community um, that's probably um, a, a bit um, as much as we can cover today hopefully you find these useful if there's anything you want from us if there's uh, any questions you have please drop us a note um, we can take this to BCC, we can take it to government and take it to SCC. Um, so if we don't know the answers ourselves, we can find out, we will come back to you. But the more information we have about how you've been impacted or how you're dealing with this, um, the better we can um, shape some support. Thanks again for joining us. Um, we'll keep these um, diarise regularly because I, I think the, the more we can come together and share. And I think the point uh, I made to Ellen, you know, we could think about other business leaders forums and other business forums but we've got a ready-made group of our corporates and partners here uh, we communicate well we can come together very well and I think I think we're a good group to, to bounce ideas from and uh, to, to spread spread the news so um, hope you all staying safe and well and we will have something in the diary in the next couple of weeks so thanks very much have a good day